When you were talking about how if a man is talking so much about himself that he tends to bond with himself, I had this flashback, John, to a relationship that I was in on and off again for about 10 years. And this man and I would have these very long conversations, a lot of times late at night on the phone, for hours and hours and hours. And he was a lot of fun to talk to, but he talked all the time about himself. And I listened and I gave and I loved and I wondered why his romantic feelings never really developed for me in the way that I hoped. That could have been one reason there. Right. Well, you became a friend and also, you know, somebody who would listen to him. But it 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 it, it seems counterintuitive. I, and this is why understanding that men and women are significantly different in certain ways. And, you know, I know for some women it's kind of like, well, wait, why isn't it just the same? And let me give a little example of that, which is that when I feel successful as a man, testosterone goes up. When I'm listening to my wife and I feel like I'm helping or supporting her in some way, then my testosterone comes up. Whenever you're achieving a goal, uh, when you're making a difference, when you're solving a problem, when you're contributing, that is a testosterone producer. Now, another, and that testosterone is something that men require 10 times more of than women. Now, that's a, that's a very, uh, at least 10 times more. Some men require 50 times more testosterone. They're going to be guys who become policemen and firemen and soldiers. They want to feel like they're really making a difference and risking their life. Uh, but bottom, bottom line, based upon his genetic buildup, men require 10 to 40 or 50 times more stimulation to say that they are uh, a success. And it's a woman's love that can really make a man feel successful. You know, if he's not a, a, a policeman or alpha male, he's not running the company or whatever, uh, his energy can start to drop. But if he's in a relationship with a woman who who responds to him like what a hero he is and what a great guy he is and you're so lucky to have him in your life. Uh, it's so wonderful to spend time with him. It's your happiness. You know, I really like being with you. I had such a fun time the other night. Oh, that was such a great movie or that play we saw. I mean, that was fabulous. And another way to show love for a man, uh, which is more powerful than saying I love you, is I love that show. I love that movie. I really had such a good time. When you say that, that actually goes more deeply into his heart than if you say, you're such a wonderful man. Uh, you're such a caring, considerate guy. Uh, those kind of phrases, uh, they're not bad, but they don't register big time. It's more like, what does a man do for you? Or what did he provide for you? So the bottom line is, if my wife, if I take her to a movie and she says, wow, that was like the best movie I ever saw, on an emotional level, most men will feel, I wrote that movie, I directed that movie. <laughs> they take credit for it. And, and that you know, often leads to women thinking men have, quote, big egos. And <clears throat> from that perspective, we do. And, and there's, it doesn't mean he can't give you what you need. Uh, you know, from a man's point of view, we don't say women have big egos, but what we say is that women have so many sensitivities. But that's a, a woman's need is to feel seen and heard and, and prioritized. And like you started the show out with, women want to feel cherished, that she's, she's VIP, she's number one. And, and, and men have to earn that right. And a woman doesn't want to feel that she has to earn a man's love. So you don't realize that a man does need to earn your love. If he doesn't feel he won you over, that he faced a challenge and was successful, uh, and he did it, or if you're happy with him, it's because of something he said or did or contributed to your life. He needs to feel that response from her. And when he feels that response, it builds his confidence. And unfortunately, when we talk about confidence, many men are lacking confidence today. You know, we're mm -hmm. dealing with a different species of men, and it's not a bad sign. It's just you have to be aware of it, is that there's a kind of reversal going on between the sexes these days, which is as we gain a higher sense of consciousness and awareness of who we are as people, and as our individuation process increases, what happens is men become more aware of not just their masculine energies, but their feminine energies as well. 
and women, as they grow in consciousness, become more aware of their accessing their masculine qualities and masculine energies, as well as their feminine. So in a sense, we're, we're more whole than we've ever been. We have access to both sides of us and, and more primitive environments. Men were sort of just all masculine. Women were all feminine. But now we have more of a balance within ourselves. But when we're stressed, now that we have access to the feminine, men tend to go too far to their feminine, just as women can relate to going too far to your masculine side, feeling independent but end up feeling alone, not being able to connect back to the softer, tender side of you. So times have changed and we both need to feel masculine and feminine but our challenge is for men to stay more in the masculine as their feminine comes forth they have to be even more of a man so to speak and for women as they access their independence their confidence their competence their ability to make money their ability to you know have education all of those qualities strengthen the masculine side of you your feminine side has to be even stronger and and that means the ability to appreciate, the ability to forgive, the ability to accept, the ability to ask for help. And asking for help is to receive. You know, the art of receiving is what women have to focus on. And you're so good now at the art of giving. Okay, you've spent thousands mm-hmm. of years learning how to give, but now the art is how to receive. And, and in, you know, when you're more competent in the work world, you have a lot more to give. But that the challenge is coming back to receiving, and we can talk more about that. Yeah, I'd love to talk more about that. One thing that really struck me so much here, John, and thank you so much for sharing so generously, one thing that really struck me is that it's important to recognize that for a man to really develop those romantic feelings for a woman, um, we need to give him that opportunity to feel those testosterone boosters that you were talking about and for him to feel like what he has to give or what he has to provide is something that is going to be received by a woman and appreciated by a woman. And one of the challenges that I know I had and many women have is that we work so hard in a prof- in our professional lives, in our careers, we become very successful and very independent and we get into this environment, and I think this is what you were talking about when you're talking about how some of the um, roles were changing and how more women are in the masculine and more men are, are in some feminine energy. But we get into this very independent uh, mode, this very results-oriented mode, which might serve us really well in our careers or in our professional lives, but it doesn't necessarily always work so well in our romantic lives. You hit it right on the nail, nicely, nicely said. And, you know, just this whole idea of needing a romantic support, um, ironically, men don't know how to do this, and men never knew how to do this. They know how to do it, you know, sometimes in the beginning of relationships, but they tend to, it wears off very quickly. And then after they've been in a few relationships, they kind of go, well, that didn't last, so why even go there? So I'll say that, you know, that happened to me, <laughs> which is I'd been, went overboard being romantic in a few relationships that didn't turn out. And I think, uh, you know, at a certain point I went, why even bother? It doesn't turn out. So you kind of, mm. men start getting a little stingy with that. They don't realize that one of the greatest gifts they can give women today is to do things that a woman will feel are romantic. And why is romance more important today than it's ever been? And that's simply because when you're more on your masculine side, you need to become more feminine. One of the most feminine experiences is romance for a woman. It, you know, Romance is anything he does that says you're special, you're number one, I'll take care of you. And in a sense, they're like little rituals, like I'll open the car door for you. And certainly you can open the car door yourself. But to have somebody open it for you makes you feel special, allows you to relax more, and it's really nice. And Mm -hmm. and you kind of have to – it's an awkward thing because you go from being the CEO or the boss and I'm in control and I can do everything myself, I do everything, to, oh, isn't it nice to have someone do something for me? And that's the way of looking at it. Oh, it's so nice for you to organize this for me. And, you know, one of the things we have to – we have to sort of – 
make romance practical and realistic is we have to look through some of our illusions. The, the romantic illusion, kind of the fantasy that can never stand up to reality, is that a man's going to know what you want, know what you like, and do it for you without you having to know and without you having to ask. Mm-hmm. So it's ironic that, and again, it's a, kind of an irony, is that women think that he's supposed to know, but actually, practically speaking, he can't. And the second thing is, if you let him know what you like and you even ask for what you want, um, it doesn't kill the romance once you become comfortable doing that. But there's sort of this uh, Disneyland romantic idea that he's going to just be a mind reader and know. And it certainly doesn't seem to be as romantic right away. But when he actually does it, does what you'd like for you, uh, it starts to stimulate the hormone oxytocin in high amounts, which is the romantic hormone. And one of its attributes is when you feel a man's being romantic, this hormone oxytocin gets produced in a woman. And that... That's what women need more of, as well as estrogen. When you're kind of like looking to a man to do it for you, that stimulates estrogen. And if he actually does it for you or you anticipate him doing it, then that stimulates oxytocin. And oxytocin and estrogen combined make you very happy. Whenever a woman is stressed, either her estrogen levels are low or her oxytocin levels are low. Whenever a woman is happy, her estrogen levels are rising, her oxytocin levels are, are, reg, are, are at a good, healthy level. So there's, uh, the, you need these two hormones. A- estrogen says, I need someone, I depend on someone. And, and oxytocin says, that someone is here. <laughs> so you're right. getting what you need. As a dating woman, what I would suggest to overcome this tendency to become overly picky uh, overly judgmental, overly critical that puts up a wall is to make a, a specific uh, intention that I'm going to date men who are not a perfect, who are not my soulmate, but I'm going to, if I can say this, use them to uh, increase my oxytocin. I'm not going to demand that they be the ultimate soulmate for me. Now, let me explain why that works. Uh, if you were to come to my, if you were shopping for a house, and you came to my house, you wouldn't be able to enjoy it. Uh, you know, if somebody comes to my house. I just had a couple of guests today, and they were saying, "Oh my gosh, what a beautiful house you have!" And look at this, and look at that, and that was their response. But if they were buying the house, they go, "Oh, this is a beautiful house, but let me look in the basement. You know, let me look at the cracks. Let me let me see mm-hmm. you know, how the plumbing works. You know, you're going to suddenly become." Uh, vigilant, hyper vigilant, to to sort of see what's not going to work, uh, <clears throat> and if you don't, if your expectation is I'm not going to buy this house, that hyper vigilance that this could be the wrong person, uh, this could be a person who hurts me, this could be a person I can't trust, this could be a person who's not good enough for me, uh, that hyper vigilance actually puts up a wall and increases testosterone because you're protecting yourself. And when you're protecting yourself, your your male hormones increase rather than your female hormones increase when you feel there's no danger. And certainly when you're looking and picking for a long-term relationship, there's a danger of picking the wrong person. So if you just kind of go, my phrase for it is to create a series of positive dating experiences because it will be more positive if you're not expecting them to be perfect, but you're having a good time. And basically, part of having a good time is coming back to the point I made before, which is being clear about what you like. Never ask a man what he likes. Uh, I mean, when I say never, it's just don't do it that much. (laughs) But the bottom line is focus more on what you like, because if he can provide for you what you like, then you will feel happy to be with him. And when you're happy to be with him, he will want to provide more for you. If if you're doing what he likes, uh, then he tends to just have a good time, but but he doesn't feel like I was successful in providing a good time for you. Uh, 